I'll green text this shit for the sake of tradition. Be me. Just out of the military. Bro. We'll call him Bill. Works for State Forestry. In Fire Lookout Tower. Pretty dope. Basically a mini apartment. Even has internet. Invites me to stay with him for a few days. Basically just hang out and play board games slash video. Awesome view. Shows me how to work fire tinder thing and call in a fire. I ask him what weird shit he's seen. He's pretty solemn about this and doesn't seem okay talking. Anon, I'll tell you man, but you can't freak out if you see this shit. At this point, I'll change perspective. He had more than one story. Story one. Watching out across the forest one day, pretty chill, saw a structure. Not stars, an actual structure of some sort. Couldn't tell. People were around it. Called it in. Gave coordinates. Game warden says he will investigate in the morning. Too late in the day. They were discussing this via radio. Radio chatter interrupted. Unfamiliar. Disregard all. This conversation is over. Comms cut off on radio. Just use his phone. Call disconnected. Cell has no signal now. Despite having perfect signal before. The structure is still there. Gets a phone call. It's his supervisor. Bill, leave this one be. Don't talk about it. Don't log it. Drop it. Confused. Asking what the deal is. Bill, you're not in trouble. Just forget seeing it. You'll be fine. Bill complies. Removes log entries. Phone rings again. Same voice as the guy on radio that broke comms. Listen to boss name. He's taking care of you. Bill says he understands. Doesn't want trouble. I will not have to call you again, voice says. Night falls. Bill goes to sleep. Next morning, Bill looks where the structure was. It's not there. The clearing it was in is gone. Nothing but trees, as if this never happened. Fast forward a few years. The structure pops up sometimes in different places. Out of nowhere, just there. It's different, but can't tell what it is. Can't determine purpose or even clear shape. Story 2. Bill finished the day's watch. Mild thunderstorms, but tower is safe. Chilled out. Getting some Vigi games. Power goes out suddenly. Bill looks to see if it's a lightning strike. Sees nothing. Waits it out. Hears clung, clung, clung from the steps as if someone is climbing. No houses for miles. No vehicle seen approaching from the road. Bill grabs a flashlight and a rifle. The footsteps stop. Hey, it's bad weather. Let me in. Voice says, underneath the building. Bill says, this is state property. You cannot be here, sir. Leave now or I'll call the sheriff. Bill can't see anyone through the windows. It's pouring rain, thunder and lightning. Voice keeps calling. Let me in. It's bad weather. Voice is not panicked. It just states it as if it were just a simple, calm request. Can't see anything. Goes out with rifle. Still repeating the same thing. Let me in. It's bad weather. Down the steps. Bill. I have a gun. The sheriff is coming. Leave. Same phrase. Further down the steps. Bill can't see the source. Bill goes in. Locks up and calls the sheriff. No more voice. The sheriff shows up. Looks around. Weather calming down now a lot. So both go down. Something stinks. Bill and Sheriff look in Bill's truck. Deer, bobcat, coyote, more than one, maybe three dead, rotting animals just laying back there, and a lot of mud. Sheriff says it might be someone trying to pull a sick joke. Drives around. Bill goes back up. Sheriff goes to Bill's truck, and then calls up 
Why did you move it? Needed pictures, Bill. Bill is confused. The animals had been removed from his truck. Bill calls Supervisor. Supervisor shows up and puts hunting rifle and shotgun under sofa compartment. This stays here if it's needed. Supervisor wouldn't speculate, but had zero doubts at all. Recon guy here, on exercise. Big brigade size plus drill going down. Just spent two days behind enemy lines. Get back to our own troops to settle in for some proper sleep. Not really guard duty, just fire watch. With where we are, there is no reason for being on alert. The chance of an enemy being here is almost zero. Even if they would try, they had to cross about 600 meters of flat, short grass. Bring recon, almost all our boys insist on sleeping in their driver and gunner seats. I sleep in the passenger gunner seat. My driver sleeps in his seat. My turn for fire watch. I don't need to do much beside walking around, keeping warm and not waking people up. Even though I'm told not to be alert, I am very much alert. Not that someone would be in our camp, but knowing that they could be watching from across the field around us. About halfway through my watch and on my way back to circle my car. I see the camo netting on our car bulging out from the driver's side, as if someone went under the netting to talk to the driver. It's dark and I only see the silhouette, but it's very clear. I don't hear anyone talking, not even when I get close enough to be able to hear, thinking at the time that it's someone from another unit trying to snatch our gear. I flip up the netting onto the roof, see a dude quickly stand up, clearly in a uniform that's not ours, camo in his helmet, basic gear, see no weapon, face paint, can barely just make out his facial features, looks Asian, I act all smug thinking I caught a thief, caught. I give out a little chuckle and ask what unit and country he's from. Dude just gives me a wide grin. Can just see his teeth exposed in the dark. I didn't find it creepy at the time, just weird. I think he's acting stupid because he got caught. Come on, you're caught. Just say where you're from. Dude just stands there with the same grin on his face. Not moving. Maybe he's not too well starting to get weirded out. I ask if he's okay and try to lay my left hand onto his shoulder. My hand hits nothing. He doesn't fade away, just stops existing entirely. I'm just standing there, looking at the clear sky from where he would be standing. In a state of shock, I guess. I'm just standing there, trying to piece all the things together that I just saw. I start to laugh. Now I'm kind of creeped out. Turn my head to look at my driver. Still sleeping in his seat. I stand there for about a good 5-10 to 10 minutes, just trying to make sense of it. I slowly put down the netting to cover the driver's side and walk back. The netting's got no bulge on the driver's side now. I don't do my last round as I'm too puzzled, trying to make sense of it. Since then, I have convinced myself that it must have been some kind of hallucination. But I wasn't tired and even though it was dark, it was clear to see someone standing with the background being a moonlit grass field and sky. Alright X, I've been debating whether or not to post here, since if anyone who knows me reads this, they'll instantly know it's me. And since I signed an NDA, it'd fuck up my future career opportunities. But to be honest, I really don't fucking care anymore. Fuck you, John. If you've screen grabbed this, I know you use this shitty website religiously. Be me. Firewatch in Alaska. Boring as fuck, but at least it pays kinda well. I get my own little Firewatch stand in the middle of fucking nowhere. Only contact with the outside world is my huge fucking ham radio, the free Wi-Fi, and the guy who delivers my supplies every two weeks. Beer, food, water, etc. B. 
Basically, I'm being paid to live in a huge fucking tower, all expenses prepaid, and occasionally look around for smoke or possible fires. The tower is cozy as fuck, cool in the summer because of how fucking high up it is, and warm in the winter because it's insulated and has an electric heater. No fireplace for obvious fucking reasons. So tall that I don't have to worry about any of the wildlife. The only thing I'm actually forced to do is the hourly radio checks, since if I don't respond, they'll send a whole fucking SWAT team to go check up on me. I'll explain later. You can basically do anything you fucking want up there, since there's no one around to actually monitor you. Okay, time for the spookies. Be me. First month of the job. Kinda spooked out because of how fucking isolated I am. Just shooting the shit and definitely not masturbating when I hear something huge slam into the bottom of the tower. Whole thing shook. What the fuck? Decide to go take a look since I don't want this fucking tower collapsing while I'm stranded with the next visit from the supply guy in a month. Decide to take a flashlight and my company standard Remington hunting rifle. Climb down the steps and point the flashlight at the wooden beams that hold the tower up. It's smeared in blood. Looks like the front of your car when you plow through a deer at full speed. What in tarnation. Mangled deer corpse at the base of the steps. Holy shit. Absolutely torn to pieces. Only a few patches of skin still on. Two legs missing. The head has been ripped in two, from the center down. Hardly resembles a deer. Only knew it was a deer because the antlers have been snapped off and shoved into its throat. There are intestines and deer guts stuck in the beam supports. Something threw the mangled deer cadaver into the fucking beams. What in the actual fuck? Loud footsteps in the deep snow coming from the tree line around the tower. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Take rifle off my shoulder. Point it at the tree line. Shout at whatever is over there to fuck off as I slowly back up, up the stairs. Chamber around. Yell that I have a gun. Fire warning shot into the woods. Hit something. What the fuck? Thing fucking squeals loudly. Actually causes my ears to bleed. Okay, fuck this. Run upstairs. Something fucking runs after me. Don't turn around. Run inside, lock the door, and close the shutters. Loud roaring from the bottom of the tower. Sounds like a mix of a bear's death cry, an elk, and a person getting CBT. Don't ask. Thing starts climbing up the stairs. Shit. There's a small gate about a third of the way up, meant to stop bears and shit from walking into my fucking living room while I sleep. It doesn't know how to open it. Fucking praise kek. After about an hour of it trying to push the gate open, and it fucking scream roaring at me, it finally leaves. Don't go outside until the next day, because it could be trying to bait me out. Deer is gone. Guts are gone. Blood smears are still there. No tracks because of the snowfall. Go back inside and play Skyrim. Act like it never happened. The first pick is the closest to my work environment since I'm not using real picks, because I don't want you idiots calling the park ranger station to tell them that Tower 7 is snitching. Sure thing anon, I guess I should elaborate on why the park rangers send a fucking SWAT team to check on you if you don't respond to the hourly radio check. Hourly radio check. Basically just responding to Tower 1, our coordinator, when he says our tower number. It's just shitty roll call. Tower 4 doesn't respond. It's the 6am check. He's probably still sleeping. Which is normal for Tower 4. Three checks later. He's still sleeping. Okay, what the fuck? Tower 1 says that I and Tower 8 should go check on him, if he doesn't respond to the next one since we're the closest. Next check comes and he doesn't respond. Well fuck.
Tower 8 rolls up in her shitty Land Rover and drives us to Tower 4. Pull up outside Tower 4. Huge fucking blood trail leading from the stairs and into the woods. Holy shit. Go up the stairs while Tower 8 tries to find where the blood trail ends. The bear gate has been torn off and is currently up a nearby tree. What? Climb upstairs. Slowly enter the living room with my handgun. We have to keep it on us at all times. The door is already open. Or rather, it isn't there. Enter room. It's fucking carnage. Blood and bits everywhere. There's half a fucking hand on the floor. No body. Seems like something burst into the room, tore up Tower 4, and then dragged his body out. Remember that Tower 8 is literally following the trail of whatever could tear through a thick wooden door. Oh fuck. Jump down the stairs and yell. She's staring off into the woods, gun drawn. She says she's not going to go in there because there are bears and wolves and shit. Wise. Call in on the radio. An hour later, a literal convoy of armed park rangers arrive. Tell us to fuck off. Never hear anything about it again. Have to give some shitty story to the others that he retired at 22. There's still more. Since you've been a good boy, I'll keep going. Time to introduce you to the guy. The guy is literally just this fucking guy with a burnt face who wears a suit. He looks like he's been in a fire or something because his face is scarred as fuck. He doesn't say anything just watches you from a distance, normally from the tree line, and writes in his clipboard. Every single tower has seen him. Apparently, according to Tower 1, he has been spotted here since the 50s. I've tried approaching him a couple times, but he'll just walk behind a tree or a rock and fucking vanish. Looks like the Jim Carrey mask guy from Metal Gear Solid 6. Just without the mask he wears, I've only heard him speak once. I was slowly approaching him from behind, trying to get the jump on the fucker, when he turned around, looked at me, and said cougar in a Norse slash Russian accent, before turning around and walking behind a rock. Turn around. There's a fucking cougar a few feet away from me. It had probably been trailing me as I followed him. It runs the moment I point my rifle at it, due to fight or flight. I don't know if he saved me or tried to get me killed. Thanks, Jim Carrey the mask. No one knows who he is or where he comes from. He just shows up, looks at you, writes in his clipboard, and fucks off. The closest he's ever got to someone was when he walked out of Tower Free's toilet and just left through the front door. Or the time he appeared outside my fucking window watching me sleep. The local Inuit folk seemed to know about him. But they refuse to say any more than, oh, him, right. Aside from that, he's been here well before Whitey showed up, and has just been a part of the local tribe's life for eons. They won't give the name they have for him, or any stories about him. They just tell you to keep your distance, and not to piss him off. I know it's boring, but that's literally it. You'll see him around eight times a month, and then he'll disappear for four more to go spook the shit out of the other towers. Tower 9 leaves him little goodie bags of spare food, etc., which he's been seen to pick up and eat. So that's cool. Be me. Finish up the 8pm hourly radio check. All the other until 6am are optional because sleep is a thing. Load up Skyrim since it's the only game I can play because the Wi-Fi is down due to the snow. Play for like 2 hours. Knocking at window. Don't care. It's probably the guy or something. He does this often. Knocking continues. Ignore it. Loud slam at window. Holy shit, okay. You've got my attention. Open blinds, expecting to see this guy and his stupid fucking clipboard. He's not there. Scan the windows. Nothing. 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 Child peeking from the corner. Nothing. Uh, nothing. Wait, what the fuck? 
snap back to window. Kid stops peeking the moment it realizes I've spotted him. Oh shit. Override my gut telling me not to go outside. If there's an actual fucking kid out there, then it'll die. And I don't want frozen kid corpse on my stairs. Open door. Absolutely nothing. What the fuck? Call out. Still nothing. Here's scuttling behind me. Turn around. Dead bird on floor that wasn't there before. What the fuck? There's a gift tag on it. A gift from me to you. Okay. Fuck this. Go back inside. Bring bird with me because I don't want to piss off ghost kid. Shut blinds. Go to sleep. I still occasionally get knocks at my window at god awful hours of the night from time to time with little dead bird gifts every four knocks. Pick is the type of bird it was. Be me. Going for a walk because me bored. Tell radio I'm going on a walk so they don't send a fucking army. It's summer so no snow. Still bring the rifle because of bears and shit. Have fun taking pop shots at deer to scare the shit out of them. Stumble across a huge camper van. We're not accepting campers cause covid so I go investigate to make sure it's not a hobo or a cultist. I'll get into that soon. Place looks old yet new. Go inside after checking some of the tents outside. Looks like someone has been living here. Empty cans in the corner. Sleeping bag on the couch. Doesn't stink like shit surprisingly. Old diary on the table. Take a read. It's from one of the people who used to work here. He got promoted from Firewatch to Park Ranger and then retired. Have fun reading for his journal. It's about him coming back because he missed the openness of the forest. Starts talking about some guy in a suit in the woods. Realize it's probably about clipboard guy. He mentions chatting to him. He doesn't do that, but okay. Pretty cool. Last entry was a few days ago. Says he's going on a hike tomorrow to look for it. No later entries. What the fuck? Leave because it's getting late. Go back a few more times. Nothing changes. He doesn't come back. A few weeks later, basically forgot. On roll call, when someone mentioned that an old colleague went missing. Oh shit, who? It's the journal guy. Wait, what? It's been months and they still haven't found him. I gave the journal to the park rangers in case it could help. They sent me an email the next day and said that telling anyone about the campsite or the journal will violate my NDA. I didn't mention the campsite. Rip Roger of Tower 11. Pick is the model of the camper van. Okay, fine. I'll talk about the cultists. Radio call from Tower 8. What the fuck does this bitch want now? Anon, get to the lake now. Okay, sure. Walk down to the lake. Holy shit. Park rangers are holding a group of robed figures at gunpoint while local police call something into their radio. The guy from Tower 5 is also there. Looks like shit. Then realize that there are a bunch of stone pillars that weren't there yesterday. Go ask one of the park rangers. He's surprisingly chill. Explains that Tower 5 guy had gone for a walk through the fourth sector, the area me and Tower 8 manage, and happened upon the robed guys sacrificing a wolf. Robed guys proceed to flip shit. One runs at him with a knife, dabs him in the thigh. Tower 5 guy proceeds to shoot him in the chest. All the other robed guys are now pissing themselves because Tower 5 guy has a semi-auto rifle and is now screaming at them as his leg starts bleeding. Tower 8 hears the commotion and calls it in. That's when the park rangers arrive and hold them all hostage. They pull the shot guy into one of their trucks and provide first aid. Tower 5 guy is former Spetsnaz who is living out the rest of his days in retirement in the Alaskan woods. Go figure. So he's perfectly fine. 
did all the first aid himself while warding away knife-willing cultists. Park Ranger tells me to leave. I'm not going to argue with the Park Rangers, so I fuck off. Fill Tower 8 in once I get back. Later find out all the roped guys got off scot-free because one of the people in the local police force is a member of their cult and used his admin powers to save them from jail. All they had to do was tear down their stone pillars and promise to never come back and they could leave. Apparently, their cult is the third largest faith in the religion, with the native religion and Christianity ahead of it. They worship some water god called Malak or something. I don't know the name. Local natives have a pretty small pantheon of gods. It comprises of Fo, the god of snow. He's like the old father. He's like a king sitting on a throne made of pine trees. Tamaka, speaker of Fo. Fo doesn't speak in a way that humans can understand. So Tamaka translates for them. He's a bird slash guy wearing a bird mask who's in a dress with no armholes who has a scabbard on his left side. Flamene, wife of Fo. She's the god of warriors, mothers and lakes. She's a woman with one arm riding on a huge elk that's larger than a tree. And then there's Tode. The natives refuse to say his full name, so they just shorten it. He's the god of fire, rot, mold and decay, who's currently chained at the bottom of the lake in my sector. He has cougars and other lesser gods to do his bidding since he can't do shit under the lake. Full Tamaka and Fumeni all live in the mountains away from humans because their voices scare them. They're all mute aside from Tamaka. Be me. Depression. GF at the time left. No friends because job means I'm far away from everyone for months. Isolation is getting to me. Decide that enough is enough. Take a rifle and head into the woods. Find nice clearing to do what I'm going to do. Put the barrel in my mouth and I'm about to pull the trigger when I hear footsteps. Turn around and see an old man with a huge white beard wearing a bear pelt robe approaching me. Quickly hide rifle because I can't bear the embarrassment of being caught failing at taking my own life. Dude walks up and says, can I sit with you, child? In a deep German accent. Sure thing, Santa. The man chuckles and sits with me. He's got a cool looking eye patch on one of his eyes. He starts talking to me. Just casual convo. Talk back. Chatting about sports, etc. Ask what I'm doing here out on my own. Say hiking. He says he knows I'm lying. Proceed to vent to the old man about how shit my life is. Old man comforts me. Realize old man has a pet bird on his shoulder. Holy shit, that's badass. Man says his name is some bizarre Swedish shit. Feel happy now. No longer depressed. Finally have clarity on life. Old guy says he has to leave. Lol, bye. He gets up, walks over to a thin tree, waves, and walks around it, and fucking vanishes. Go check. There is no way he could have just walked around this thin tree and just disappear before he reached the other side. What the fuck? Take rifle and go home. Haven't felt suicidal since. Thanks, Santa. Tower 7 and on here. I'm back and I've got more stories. I asked around the other towers and I've collected some of their encounters with the weird shit about this forest. Be tower free. Be one of the local natives. Company did a diversity expansion program to include more of the local natives for public image. I don't know. Fails spectacularly because the natives view the forest as a holy site and don't want to work in or near it. Their version of the devil is literally under one of the lakes in the park. Tower free guy. We'll call him Ricky since it's close to his IRL name. He's one of the only natives who signed up for the program. Sent to replace one of the Firewatch guys who retired. He gets in there and sets up shop in the tower. Decides to explore the local wilderness. Says it was the first time he'd actually been to the forest and he wasn't expecting it to be so peaceful. Only heard stories about it. Basically just exploring. 
old campsites, etc. Notice something moving in the distance. Locks eyes on it. Nothing there. Same thing happens like seven times. He's certain something is following him. Hears leaves rustling every now and again. Okay, fuck this. He heads back, hearing the rustling all the way back. Spooked as shit. Gets past the tree line. There's a clearing that surrounds every tower. Looks back. There's a literal clone of him staring back. Mimics his every move perfectly, all the way down to breathing at the same time as him. Just mirrored. Holy shit. Who the fuck are you? It stays back, in his voice. Slowly walks back towards the tower. It follows. Stay the fuck back. Stay the fuck back. He pulls out his gun. Thing doesn't have a gun, so it just mimics him, holding the gun, but without an actual gun. It speaks. You back. He asks him what the fuck he's doing in the woods, because the park has closed for the season. You come back woods. What the fuck? Ask what he's trying to do. You come back to woods. Thing starts moving on its own. Oh shit, shit, shit. See you soon. Thing runs into woods. Never sees it again. Still has nightmares about it, apparently. Be me. It's camping season, so every night, I have to deal with drunk teens and poachers. Just chilling when radio pings. What the fuck do these fuckers want? Put headphones on. It's one of the lead park rangers. Oh fuck. Anon, we've got some missing campers in your sector. We're sending Tower 8 and 5 over to help. Tower 5, Spetsnaz guy. He's coming because me and him are the only people in Firewatch who know anything about tracking or finding missing people. I'm basically a veteran forest ranger at this point. Tower 8 is coming because it's also her sector. It's also her responsibility to go find the campers. Park rangers can't do it themselves because they have their hands full at the moment. Fucking rangers. Never there when you actually need them. Wait for 8 to arrive so we can go pick up the Spetsnaz guy. Start heading towards where the campers said they were going to be camping. Mangled animal corpses along the road every couple of minutes. Can't be roadkill because they don't look run over. Don't mention it since I don't want to spook the other two out. Arrive at the campsite. Park along the road and haul ass over to the area with the tents. They were camping in the middle of nowhere. So their campsite is in a tiny clearing in the middle of dense woodland. Fucking teens. Shout to see if anyone is here. No response. Fuck this. Check all the tents. Looks like everyone left in a hurry. Clothes everywhere. Spilled food, etc. Where the fuck did these guys go? After a few minutes of searching, we find one. He's in a tree. But fucking naked. Neck deep in panic. Guy is freaking the fuck out. Ask where the others are. He just says that they went into the woods. Nice answer, dick cheese. Spetsnaz guy and Tower 8 try to get him out of the tree. His eye go look for the others. Walking back to the campsite. See something on a bench. Decide to have a quick look. Looks like a wet jumpsuit or something. It's folded really neatly. Like in a posh English hotel or something. Pick it up and unfold it. It's not a fucking jumpsuit. It's human skin. Looks like what would happen if you scooped out everything from a corpse so it's just an empty skin suit. Dick, balls, and everything. Holy shit. What the fuck? Drop it. It's still fresh. Blood hasn't coagulated yet. Immediately call it in on my walkie. Park ranger on the other end goes from bored and uninterested to full fucking panic mode within a few seconds of me explaining. Put skin back on the bench. Park ranger says they'll be there any second. Five and eight heard what was happening through the comms, so they're already bringing the team to its Land Rover. Give him some clothes because he's naked as fuck. And that's not something I want to say. 
Guy just keeps rambling about how they went to the lake and pissed him off. He isn't talking about himself based on the way he's talking about him. Ask him why he was in the tree. He put me there. Guy's bawling his eyes out while rambling. For the first time ever, Spetsnaz guy is actually concerned. Park rangers arrive. Full fucking convoy of the fuckers, armed to the teeth. Tell us to get the fuck out and give them the kid. We oblige, not wanting to face their fucking wrath. We bail the fuck out of there. Later find out that the skin belonged to one of the nine kids who went missing. Rangers found two more skins floating in the lake. No trace of the other six. Have to explain to grieving parents that it was a bear attack. Fucking bullshit. The one teen that survived is sent to a mental hospital because his brain is completely fucked. Never hear anything about it again. <laughs>